these are coming soon screens. Yes. So all these cool screens that we've been showing off, squares and rounds and high density and capacitive touch. Um, people are like, when can I set up? When can I get them? Well, we're going to have them in the shop. So we just wanted to get that ready since there's quite a few. Yeah. So they're being photographed and there's little placeholders in the store. So if yeah, you're sign right, up. They'll go fast. Yeah. And you'll get notified when we do get them in stock. And then we'll, of course, have the driver board as well. Next up. Next up, we've got the Tiny Code Reader. This is from Pete Warden. We have a guide that goes with it. Thankfully, he wrote it uh, for the learning system. Um, and this is a very simple sensor. I mean, simple. It's complicated, but it seems simple. It has an RP2040 on the back and a camera module on the front and then a JST SH connector that can be used with quick or STEMA boards. And what it does is, uh, if you go to the last photo, when it sees a QR code, it will automatically read it and will give you back that data over I2C. And it's very fast um, and very good and a lot less expensive than most QR readers because it has a general pur pur purpose microcontroller programmed with uh, TensorFlow Lite for microcontrollers that does the image recognition. So I think I'm going to skip doing a demo because it's very simple. There is a, there is a video. You want to play the video? Oh, yeah. Let's Good. do the video. So check it out really good pricing um i think it's like seven dollars for this sensor that does Boom. a lot and uh you know secretly you could probably hack it to do some other stuff too yep. uh, so check out uh tensorflow light for microcontrollers and a lot of other pete warden's smart sensor technology next up next up uh this is something that we're using for internal hacking but i thought i would make a dev board for it so other people could hack with it it's a uh, piezo driver using the PAM 8904. This is a chip that's specifically designed for driving piezo discs. And it, what's interesting is, is that it seems like it's an audio amplifier that can go up to 300 kilohertz, which is not something you can do with um, it's 100 kilohertz. I can't remember. But it's like more than 20 kilohertz of uh, piezo discs. So it's good for ultrasonic and like other um, like non-audio based piezo driving needs sometimes you have to like vibrate something or you want to like bounce ultrasonic waves off of something a piezo will do that whereas a speaker will be too slow so this is a driver that takes in three to five volts or two and a half to three to five volts and it will um, use two internal switch cap converters to give you up to three times gain on the voltage and then it uses differential output so if you have 3.3 volts in and you have three point three times gain, it'll give you 10 volts output. And then differentially, because it's like plus or minus, you'll get 20 volts across the piezo. So much stronger drives, especially we needed this for doing ultrasonic experimentation where you can't just drive it from my controller pan and get, you know, three volts, 20 milliamps output. You want something much stronger. There's a little gain setting at the top. Um, both are off. It's, you know, if both are set to off then the sensors in sleep mode or the drivers in sleep mode one gain two gain both to the right is three gain only thing to watch out for is don't set it to three gain if you're using four volts or higher because the output really doesn't want to be more than 10 volts um peak to peak and while i wish they wouldn't let you purposefully destroy the sensor and you're not going to destroy it instantly it's not good for the sensor to be strained so if you're at five volts, you know, keep it to one or two gains so you don't go above 10 volts. All right. And then the start of the show tonight, just like you, lady, our customers, our community, the entire YouTube food staff, and more is. Yay! It's the NXP DigiKey Adafruit collab that we started in late, late 2019. Finally, here in the shop, uh, we've got a Metro shaped board with the um, IMX RT1011. We have an existing board that's very similar to that's Wi Fi. This one has micro SD, so it's very affordable. So it's under 20 bucks, and you get a 500 megahertz IMX NXP processor. This is a Cortex M7. This is like an incredibly powerful chip. Pleased. And it's less expensive than many AVR 8 bit microcontroller boards. So. I like the silkscreen design. Yeah, the silkscreen is very beautiful. Thanks to Phil B for it. It's got a micro SD card slot, so you can use it for uh, data storage or retrieval. 
USB type C has native USB. You can power it from a DC jack. Um, again, this very powerful 500 megahertz processor with 128 kilobytes of RAM. And for storage, uh, both disk storage, internal disk storage and firmware storage, eight megabytes of QSPY flash. So it's very speedy. So great for data logging, or if you want to stream data off of the micro SD and process it very quickly, because we don't have anything faster than the Cortex M7 for a microcontroller. A lot of accessories on it as well. And not just you've got all of the um, Arduino compatible header, so you can use shields with it. Stem QT port as well. Um, NeoPixel built in, that micro SD card on off switch. A JTAG SWD port. So if you want to do step debugging, you can connect this up to your JLink um, and use it with uh, MCU Expresso, which is NXP's IDE. You can do step debugging with their programming system. I will mention though, even though it is Arduino shaped, it does not actually run the Arduino IDE. Instead, we have CircuitPython support, which I think is great because you can get up and running really fast. And we support I2S and the SD card reading and you know, digital in out, PWM, analog, all the stuff you expect. Or you can use NXP's IDE, which of course is going to be the most powerful. And they've got IDE with tech support and um, all of the um, ARM Cortex uh, SimSys core required to uh, use all the peripherals on the M7. So you want to get started really quickly, go with CircuitPython. You want like power and control over every register and every byte and all the caches, uh, use NXP's tools. But either way, um, this is the partnership that we're doing because we wanted to show people that even though this is a 500 megahertz processor, we can make it as easy to use as an 8-bit microcontroller. All right, and uh, somewhat collectible board too. I think this might be the first circuit board with the new DigiKey logo. Yes. And that is new products for the week this week. Ooh.